This is the typographer's book lecture for the beginning typography class, and in this lecture we'll go over some examples of typographer's books, as well as some samples and ideas that you can look at to get inspiration for the construction of this book. In this project, you are tasked to create a book that showcases your research about a typographer through your written text, but also through your design of the book. Your typographer's book should emulate and pay homage to the style and design of your selected typographer. This book can use imagery and illustration, but it should ultimately be about the type. So all of you have been assigned a typographer, and we really want you to explore their style and how can you take the work that they've contributed to the typographic community and showcase it through this accordion fold book. So here's some examples of past work from students. This is one about William Caslon, and you can see the way the accordion structure works and how this information kind of spills from one spread to another. And then the task of really taking the personality or the design sensibility of the person you're assigned and reinterpreting it and creating this book utilizing those elements. Here's one for Susan Kerr. She created a lot of the icons for the original Macintosh, so this is a really fun one. Playful color palette, use of icons, and then running text inside of them. This student went above and beyond and even created a floppy disk kind of casing that the book fit inside of. Fun die cut on the cover that exposes the name. Here's one for Morris Fuller Benton. Fun color palette with the orange. Nice photography that's cut out on these orange backgrounds. This one's really wonderful because you can see that things go from one spread to another. One benefit of the accordion fold book is that there's not really any binding or gutter or place that information will get lost where the book is bound. So you can easily have imagery or text go from one side of a spread to another, and I highly recommend exploring that. Here's one for Max Meetinger for Helvetica. Great, strong color palette, nice diagonals, fun, big type. It's really interesting on this project to really go large with the type. Extreme scale can be interesting to explore. Here's a close-up of Carol Twombly's book. And then the back of it. Obviously, the back of the book is an interesting challenge because you want it to definitely feel secondary to the front of the book. You want it to be very clear to the viewer that there's a front where the main part of the text and content is, but you also want to do something fun and playful in the back that makes something interesting. So this is an interesting solution with this checkerboard pattern with this really fun wood-inspired typography that kind of switches from this really bright blue to this really bright yellow. Here's one for David Quay. He's a more deconstructed designer, so you can see a little bit of that showing here. Wonderful example of the set quote, that's one of the requirements for this, and really fun showcasing of the alphabets there as well. Took a really deconstructive approach, really simulating his style and the kind of design work that he's known for. Here's Jan Tischel, so another interesting quote. This one has a little tip in, so you can see the alphabet there that's on tracing tissue. It's actually tipped into the book. So if you want to explore die cuts or having information tipped in or small short sheet pages, you're more than welcome to do that. So again, you can use imagery, but as much as possible, we'd like you to focus on the typography because that's really what's important for this assignment. This is Barry Deck. This one had a cutout, so you can see the person cut out the template gothic. Very creative solution. Template Gothic is a stencil-oriented typeface, so it only is really appropriate that we would cut this out. Nice color palette here as well. Here's Cyrus Highsmith. He's really known for his positive-negative space work. Fun color palette here, a lot of really enlarged letter forms. And then we have some type specimens, because I really think type specimen books are the best place to look for inspiration on this assignment. The assignment here is to showcase the typography of your assigned typographer, and that is really what type specimens are meant to do. And type specimen books are as old as typography and movable type. They began to show up in the 15th century, and their primary purpose is to showcase type and convince people to buy it. Specimen books are still in use today and are often very creative in their display and arrangement of typography. And this is really why I think this is a great place to look for inspiration on this, is because these books are invented and created to showcase and put type in an interesting environment and setting that would make designers or typesetters purchase these typefaces. And we've seen a lot of them up to this point. Some of these have been in the historical lecture. You know, here's a specimen from William Caslon that we looked at. And you can see here how we're seeing things at different sizes and scales. It's really showing off different types of weights and styles that exist within the font. Here's another one, a condensed modern typeface from Deberny and Pernod. Here's a close-up of some more wood type, this amazing bifurcated Tuscan looking wood type with the shadow, really highlighting these details. 
We also saw some from Futura. And here's a more contemporary one. This is showcasing a serif typeface that is really meant for editorial settings. So they created this interesting leaflet or almost newspaper-like booklet that unfolds. Inside, we see this cast of characters on the right with all of the different styles. So here it's showcasing all of the different elements that exist within the typeface. So the lining figures, all the punctuation, the lowercase, the small caps. And then on the left here, you can see how they're setting this at different sizes. There's a headline, there's a subhead, there's some body copy. This really allows the viewer to see exactly how this typeface could be used and potentially convincing them that it would be good for their project. Here at the bottom is a neat thing where they're showing open type features. So they're showing alternates and ligatures and other elements in this bright red color that really draws attention to these different elements on the page. Here's one from Amigre. They're a type foundry out of Oakland, and they do a lot of wonderful display type, but also some great text faces. And here you're seeing these type faces, and then some letter forms underneath that show you a little glimpse into what this typeface would look like. And then at the very bottom is the actual name of the typeface itself. Here's one of their specimens. They are known for a little bit more deconstructive oriented work. So here we're seeing them show that through this layering of typefaces, the setting that kind of almost becomes textural. Here's Ginger, a geometric sans serif typeface. It's very prim and proper and very straightforward, and so the specimen book is also that way. So a nice way of showcasing the alphabet on the left there. This might be appropriate for your typographer or the style that you want to take this. And then really interesting on the right, how they have some of the Latin-based characters and special glyphs and then some of the numeral characters that they want to highlight on the right there. Then we have things like this. This is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and I'm sure this is something you have all seen. It often shows up when we're looking at typefaces. And this is called a pangram. And pangrams are sentences that contain every letter of the alphabet. They range in length, and some only use every letter once, where others repeat some letters more than once. They are often seen with typography and specimens since they create a readable sentence that contains all of the 26 letters. So there's a lot of bang for buck here. We're able to not only see an example of one of every letter in that typeface, so obviously only lower or upper case, but then it's also readable so we can judge the readability and how easy it is to use and read this typeface. And there's a lot of these. You can even go on Wikipedia and find an entire list of pangrams. So maybe you want to potentially showcase the alphabet through these really large, interesting pangrams that you use. Maybe you pick ones that make sense for your typographer or the style and direction that you want to take the book. So here's another one, the five boxing wizards jump quickly. Here's another specimen book, another one that's a little more deconstructive. We see this layering happening here with type of different weights and styles. There's even some black outlined letter forms that are running over all of this that creates a lot of interest. So this could be a style that you need to pursue depending on the person that you've been assigned. Here's some of the inside, really interesting. Here this typeface has a lot of specialty language glyphs, so they're really showcasing these in this grid-like structure where they're knocking the letter form out and then under it, they're giving some information about what country uses that glyph. They also created really neat patterns out of these glyphs. So here are ampersands that are linked together to create these almost snowflake-like shapes. So maybe this would be appropriate for what you're doing. Maybe you want to play with actually making patterns out of the type or creating texture or some kind of background pattern out of a bunch of glyphs. Remember, there's very few restrictions on this assignment, and we really want you to explore and have fun with the type. So maybe this is something that you're interested in trying. Oftentimes we see a breakdown of every glyph that's in the typeface, and that's what we're seeing here with this listing or showcasing of every single glyph. So not only are we seeing the letters, upper and lower case, and the numerals, but here we're seeing the copyright symbol and the at symbol, the ampersand, all the arrows and hidden figures that exist within these typefaces. So maybe some of the typefaces you're working with are known for having a lot of glyphs or specialty characters. Maybe that's something we want to explore then. This one also has this really nice seafoam light color behind each of these glyphs that are really showcasing the bounding box that helps us see which glyphs potentially are above the baseline or below the baseline and things like that. Here's a specimen for F.S. Emmerich. This is from Fontsmith. They create some gorgeous specimens. They're a really good one to look at. They have a wonderful way of showcasing these typefaces and really taking the personality and style of them and showing them off in these printed booklets. 
So there's some interior spreads of this. You're seeing this E-M, 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 and it's really showcasing this typeface at different sizes and helping you see how well it works at all of these different scales. It's also a little bit of a play on an eye chart here that's really fun. Here's some of the inside on the right where they're showcasing all of the different weights. So this typeface comes in an amazing amount of weights and styles. So you're seeing everything from the thin to the heavy. And then on the left, they have some welcome copy. They're kind of giving you a little background on the personality and the style of this typeface. And then a wonderful layout with this red band running through. So I think this potentially could be something that could inspire you and in how you treat and handle the typographer's book for this assignment. Here's some of the inside, a wonderful large quote. So remember, this is one of your requirements. And this one's done really well, and it's really showcasing the typography. It has nice hanging punctuation. And then again, those colored bands at the bottom. And then the right, this great monotone photo on that teal background again with some more information and body copy. And then the back itself, it's showing all the glyphs, and then it has the future starts now. So again, this even would be a good inspiration for the back of your book and potentially the way you want to handle that space and how it works in conjunction with the front. Here's a close-up of some of these things. So you can see all of the different letter forms again. So they're showing all of the glyphs that exist within the typeface. This is the work of House Industries. They have incredible specimen books. This is one that recently came out for Yorkland Stencil. So it's a stencil typeface. They often work with French paper and really interesting printing methods. They frequently play with making lots of big type and they have fun ways of showing off alphabets. So here's some, you can see on the right how they've run the alphabet vertically there. And then really fun color blocking and color play. Here's a list of all of the weights of aims. So this is for another one of their typefaces, aims. And you can see there all of the different weights and how they kind of build there from thin to black. Here's some more of the inside of the Ames specimen with the showcasing of the italic and the Roman and then this really fun Ames inspired polka dot background. So they're a very playful type foundry. They have a lot of fun and there's a lot of style and history to the work that they produce. So that would be something that definitely would want to be integrated if you're working with House Industries. This is a specimen book from Klim. It's a wonderful type foundry from New Zealand. It's run by Chris Soresby, very talented and prolific typographer, and he's really known for creating very well-crafted typefaces that are frequently used for large editorial projects. And so you'll see that style within the specimen, this wonderful waterfall on the right, where we have science so big, and then the words get longer and longer, or there's more and more words, so then as we look down the page, we're able to see the same type smaller and smaller. So that's another strategy we frequently will see. So by the time we get to the February 19th, 1473 to May 24th, 1543, we can really see this typeface at a smaller size. It really helps us see how versatile and useful it is. And then on the left, we have body copy specimens, where we're really able to see different settings of this typeface. So this is a very straightforward way to show type specimen, but it's also really successful and really true to the work of Chris and Klim. Here's some close-ups of some of the inside. So here you're actually seeing the label. So FF Unit Slab Ultra 55 Point. So oftentimes when type specimen books are produced, they have little labels that help identify and tell us what exactly the setting we're looking at is. Usually it's the weight, the typeface, and the size. So that really helps us understand what we're looking at and potentially make decisions about what typefaces we want to use. And that might be something that you want to incorporate into your typographer's book. This is another wonderful specimen. This is from Typotech. They're a type foundry from Europe, and they create incredible typefaces frequently for editorial projects, and they often feature amazing multilingual support. And this was a wonderful specimen they made all about large, medium, and small text. And what's neat about it is it has some cuts into the specimen that actually allow us to flip and change these different pages. So it allows us to create this kind of mix and match scenario where we can look at different typefaces together on one page. It's almost like those books when you were a kid that mix the head and the torso and the legs of different characters. But here we can really do it with typography to allow us to explore all of these varieties of typefaces and settings. It's a really creative solution. They have other wonderful specimen books as well, and it might be something that inspires you on this project. Here's one that I found for Felice. It's just a very elegant and classy type specimen, as it says here, 
wonderful navy with gold. Color can be such a powerful tool on this project and something that you might want to explore of how do you use a color palette that really does justice to your typographer. And here's some of the inside, that red again, and then a wonderful weight listing on the left that's centered, showcasing everything from light to black. And on the right, we have just some general information about the typeface, who the designer was, the different features it contains, what foundry it's from, etc. Here's one from register type. This was a neat way to show different weights, where there's just one R, and then we're seeing this across, so it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, and then that lowercase a gets heavier and heavier, and then eventually we have the full weight listing here. So you can even look online. Most of these type foundries have different images or specimens to showcase their typefaces. You might even look if they sell their typefaces on a place like MyFonts or somewhere like that because they need to have images that showcase what their typeface looks like in use. And that potentially might be very helpful for you from a visual standpoint to give you a jumping off point. Here's some other fun ones. The just in-your-face typographic approach here is so amazing. This would be a great inspiration piece for this project. I love the regular on the purple with the weight shifting, and then on the red with all the different glyphs being shown. They're showing off and talking about different attributes of the font. It's just really fun color play and very much about the type, which is really what we want to do on this assignment. Here's some more specimens from Fontsmith. This is for Silas Sands. So it's a series of booklets that they produced. And on the inside, you can see how they're really showcasing the typography. Here's fun one where they have these short sheets or these tippins in the middle in pink that feature some other features. This one particularly is looking at the lining figures and you can see how those figures perfectly line up. Here's some more of their specimens where they're showing large, large type and numerals again. And then if you look behind, they're showing body copy and how those things set. Here's one for Le Monde. This is typographic work by Jean-Francois Porchez. And you can see how he's really treating this as a newspaper. And that's because this was a typeface that was originally produced for a famous newspaper in France. So he's actually using the different typefaces within the Le Monde family to create this wonderful newspaper specimen. And then on the right, this gorgeous approach where we're really seeing the different weights and then we get to see a full character set or almost full character set for each of the different sans serifs and different weights themselves. Then we have a little comparison down here at the bottom where it's showcasing Le Monde in comparison to Times which is another very famous newspaper typeface. So another interesting way to maybe showcase typography for your book. Here's a more deconstructive approach. This is an interesting specimen I found. The color is just really interesting with the color on the black. It says tracks, and then it has these neat alphabets that it's showcasing with all these fun glyphs in the upper right. Here's some of the inside. There's those glyphs at the bottom, these kind of pattern pieces. And then it's fun how we get to see the type really big. And then if you look, you can see it really small down below. So for this assignment, embrace the typographer you selected. Research their style and get inspired by their accomplishments. Really think about how you can best represent them in this book. Look at images of their work. Try to find examples of what they've done. I think that will be a really good jumping off point because there are really few restrictions on this project. So we want you to be creative, design with intent, and have fun. I would start by jumping into who they are and what you think their visual vernacular is. So again, remember, we don't want this to be about their design work. Some of these typographers have done quite a bit of design work, but we really want to focus on the typography itself. So to begin, you want to start by writing the research paper and then ultimately determining the size you're going to take this book. And then we want to work on some sketching that we'll post to the discussion that we can decide on the direction where we want to take this. So as always, if you have any questions at all, please email your instructor.